then I got up his hands contently. Happy his plan for the challenge was working like it was supposed to. Since they finally cleared the misunderstandings hanging between them, he did everything he could to make sure Enoshita knew there was no one else he would want to be with, be it a woman or another man. He would gladly kick himself for not realizing what the problem was sooner. He could easily figure it out if he just thought about it a bit more. Enoshita was a strong guy, but the insecure part of his mind took over sometimes and sent him into a spiral of overthinking. He knew it better than anyone else. He had seen Enoshita doubting himself, questioning his worth countless times, and yet he failed to recognize it now when it counted. But he didn't intend to let it be like that. And so he came up with a plan. They hadn't really gone out much recently since both their jobs were exhausting and usually just ended up huddled by the TV in the evening, sharing some snacks and a blanket before going to sleep. But since the morning a week ago, Tanaka decided to change that a bit. Not that he didn't like it when Enoshita curled on his lap, or when he let Tanaka lay his head on his shoulder, but if he wanted to make sure his boyfriend was secure in their relationship, he had to step up his game. And that's why he was now leading Enoshita towards the gym where he worked, their fingers entwined together and shoulders occasionally bumping affectionately against each other. Why exactly are we going to your work together? Because you deserve to relax a bit after the last month. And I happen to have a free spot today. Enoshita raised his eyebrow. So your idea to relax is to destroy me physically? Not destroy. I have other ways for that. He winked and Enoshita smacked his shoulder, blushing furiously. Don't say things like that in public. Why? It's not like the people around didn't do that before. Ryu! He earned another smack to his chest and laughed. All right, all right. But seriously, you would be surprised how much exercise helps with relaxing your mind. That's exactly what you need, and I'm happy to provide. Inashita blinked in surprise. He squeezed Tanaka's hand, giving him a soft smile that always made him weak in his knees. Thank you. Tanaka grinned giving him a quick peck on the cheek while wrapping his arm around his shoulders to pull him closer. They arrived at the gym after another five minutes of walking. He noticed Enoshita's eyes widening as they walked through the hallway into the main room with all the machines. It's so large. Tanaka smiled proudly. We are doing really good now, so we expanded a lot in the last few months. Enoshita took a small step back. I don't know if I fit here. Everyone looks so experienced and fit already. I'm not sure if this is a place for me, Ryu. Araka squeezed his hand again in reassurance, gently caressing his knuckles. Don't worry. The people you see here now are regulars who exercise since they were teens. Most of the people that come here are beginners with office jobs who just want to release some steam. And I will show you the ropes. That's why I'm here. Enoshita visibly hesitated, but then took a deep breath and nodded, determination settling on his face. Alright. Tanaka beamed. He pressed a short kiss to Enoshita's fingers and tugged on his hand. Come on, let's meet some of my colleagues. Are you sure? Of course. I have to show them how lucky I am to have someone as pretty and amazing as you. They will burst with jealousy. He tucked on Enoshita's hand again and led him towards the main desk where he spotted some of his gym friends waiting for their clients. Hey guys, being lazy again, I see. Hey, it's not my fault that the guy I train is always late. I should start billing him the time I waste waiting. Huh. 
As if you didn't just say it's less work for you this way. I said nothing of that sort. Tanaka snorted. Yeah, yeah, sure. One of the guys rolled his eyes before tilting his head when he noticed Enoshita standing a bit awkwardly to the side, still holding onto Tanaka's hand. You have a visit today? Grinning, Tanaka pulled Enoshita a bit closer, wrapping his arm around his waist. Yep, that's Chikara, my sweetheart and future husband. He had to stifle a laugh when he watched Enoshita's face turn bright red, his lips parting a bit. I... hello? So we finally get to see the awesome Enoshita? Nice to meet you, I'm Kato. Kojima. Nice to meet you too. He paused and turned to Tanaka. Awesome. Yeah, Tanaka wouldn't shut up about you for the last three months. We weren't even sure if he didn't just make you up to make us jealous because there's no way he could get someone that smart to date him. But I guess we were unfair. Though he definitely didn't do justice. Oh, thank you. Hey, no flirting. He's my husband. Find your own. Both guys raised their hands up in defense before all three of them snorted a short laugh. Well, it was nice to finally meet you. We will leave you alone. Tanaka exchanged a short fist bump with both of them before taking Enoshita's hand and leading him to the changing rooms. Enoshita was quiet until the door to the changing rooms closed behind them. Why did you call me your husband? We... We aren't... and in front of people. Tanaka smiled and slid his arms around Enoshita's sides, looking into his eyes. Practice for the future. And I want you to know I was serious when I told you I have no regrets asking you out. I have the best boyfriend ever and I want everyone to know it. Enoshita bit his lip and hid his face in Tanaka's shoulder. Thank you. I didn't do anything worth thanking. I'm simply stating the fact. I want to be with you and I would love to marry you one day. Me too. Then I'm happy. Come on, let's change and do some exercise. I promise you'll love it. Of course. I have the best trainer in the world. Hell yeah. Going shopping with Kenji was an interesting event, to say the least. Even before he got hurt and could walk without a problem. These days, he no longer needed the crutches to walk and move around, which Aune was incredibly grateful for, but that didn't mean he would let his boyfriend go alone. He would be glad if Kenji rather stayed at home. He could do the shopping on his own, as he did for most of the last three months with no issue. But Kenji was not to be persuaded. He needed to move, he said while already putting on his shoes. And Aone could only sigh and go to dress up too. He agreed that the injured knee had to be worked with, but that was what rehabilitation was for, right? There was no need to risk getting hurt again by carrying heavy bags around. Kenji seemed to be of a different opinion though and Aune would be damned if he let anything happen to his boyfriend. Kenji, slow down. He could feel Kenji roll his eyes before he turned to him with an impatient expression on his face. I'm not walking fast, you are just slow. I'm careful, not slow. You should be too. Kenji sighed but stopped and waited for Aune to catch up with him. Seriously, you worry too much. I'm fine, see? I can walk just fine and nothing hurts. For now. Oh boo, if I'm not going to use that leg, it will become useless. 
I know you are worried I might hurt myself again, but I would rather take that risk than be crippled for the rest of my life because I didn't walk when I could. He cupped on his face, making him look down into his eyes. Trust me with this, okay? I would tell you if it starts to hurt again. Aona frowned, wrapping his fingers around Kenji's wrist to caress his skin with his thumbs. They both knew that wasn't going to be the case. Kenji rarely showed weakness or pain until it was beyond bearable level and that was usually too late. It made Aona's heart ache. He knew Kenji was like that to everyone, but he still couldn't stop feeling like he was letting him down somehow by not being able to make his own boyfriend share his pain with him. It felt like Kenji didn't trust him with it. He would put his life into Kenji's hands, so why didn't Kenji trust him with his pain? Nobu? He snapped out of his thoughts, finding Kenji looking at him with concern written all over his face. Sorry. He wasn't even sure what he was apologizing for. Probably everything. For being the cause of Kenji's injury, or not being trustworthy enough for him to confide in him with something as serious as pain. Perhaps even for his over-the-top protectiveness that was apparently annoying Kenji more than making him feel secure. Kenji furrowed his brow, his fingers stopping the small movements along Aona's cheekbones. What's wrong? And don't say nothing. I can see it in your face you were thinking about something and that something wasn't nice. You can't hide it from me. What was it? Aona sighed. It shouldn't surprise him Kenji could read in his face like in an open book after all the years they were together. Why do you never tell me you are in pain? Kenji blinked in confusion. But I do tell you when something hurts. But always late when you can't bear it anymore and it shows on your face. Never before that. Why? Kenji sighed and gently scratched the short hair on Aona's nape. You know I don't like sharing that with others. But I'm your boyfriend. We've been together for almost five years. Does that mean nothing? Nothing? How can you say that? You think I don't trust you? Or that you aren't the most important person in my life? That's what the problem is? Aona avoided his gaze. He didn't have to answer when everything was said. Oh Nobu. And you are telling me I'm overthinking everything. Look, I know I'm not the best when it comes to sharing feelings and I keep a lot of things to myself, but that doesn't mean I don't trust you. I just don't want to worry you. We've been through this, Kenji. Yes, I know. But I still feel bad you have to run around me. He caressed Aona's cheek, smiling softly, sending Aona's heart racing in his chest. You are the only person I would entrust my life to. I would let you hold my heart on your palm if it was possible. And I'm the luckiest guy in the world to have you. And if you don't believe me, watch. He let go of Aona's face and turned to face the half-full street, waving his arm. Hey everyone, my future husband is the best and the most caring person in the world. And who says different needs to have their head checked. Aona opened his mouth to stop him, but it was too late. He felt heat creeping up his cheeks as the people stared at them, but Kenji didn't seem to mind. He threw nasty looks at the ones who scoffed, but otherwise was completely unbothered that he turned all the attention on them. He turned back to Aona, his typical half-mouth smirk present on his lips. See? Now I trust you that you won't smack me for what I did. Aona couldn't help but chuckle. Of course Kenji would think like that. But it surprisingly made miracles to his mind. 
He shook his head in a loving exasperation and then twined their fingers together. That was supposed to be my challenge, you know? What was? To call you my husband. Kenji grinned. Well, I always said I finish your sentences. And also start them. That too. But I'm usually pretty accurate with it, aren't I? Ona smiled. Yes, you are, my dear. The biggest problem Noya was facing with the challenge was to actually get Asahi out of the house. His boyfriend was working on some new collection for who knows which brand, which meant he spent most of the time in his office sketching designs and didn't really seem in a mood to go out. Noya understood it was his job, but everyone needed a break from time to time, right? Asahi was working hard for several days straight, and Naya started to worry his boyfriend might get burnt out this way. So he hung out around him, waiting for the right moment to start his pursuing campaign. If not for the challenge, then for Asahi's mental health. He rolled over on the couch and stared into the ceiling, groaning quietly. Asahi, are you done yet? So he chuckled and reached over to ruffle Noya's hair. You, I promise I will tell you when I'm done, but if you keep distracting me, it will take much longer. That's on purpose. You haven't set foot from our flat in the last four days. You need some fresh air. You... I'm serious. Just one walk to the park. You can even take it as an inspirational stroll. Who knows what could catch your eye and light up a flame of inspiration? Asahi raised his eyebrows and put down the pencil, a small smile playing on his lips. Flame of inspiration? Where did you get that? Don't tell me you were watching one of those romantic dramas with Tanaka again. Naya sat up and crossed his arms over his chest, pouting. So? It's a well-spent evening with my bro, and we can make fun of those movies together. I would watch them with you, but you always start crying because they break up. Because it's sad. It's not. It's clear they will end up together either way because the writers were too cowardly to write an actual non-cliché ending. As I whined quietly. Still, it's sad when they argue and break up. Because then something horrible always happens to one of them that makes the other realize they can't be without them. He sighed and looked away. He took the pencil back in his hand but didn't draw a single line. Just stared at the paper in front of him for a moment. Maya frowned, reaching over to gently pat his hair. Is something wrong? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I'm glad you are expressing emotions. There's nothing wrong with you crying sometimes. So he sighed again. No, it's just... It always reminds me of us, you know. Us? Yeah. We also argued and look what had to happen to make me realize I was in the wrong. It wasn't that bad. He could see Asahi's knuckles turning white as he gripped the pencil harder. You got shot. How is it not bad? Noya sighed and hugged him. His boyfriend's voice might have sounded even, but Noya didn't let that fool him. He knew Asahi, knew his voice, and could discern the slightly strained undertone. You are still worried about that? I'm fine, really. I have no permanent damage and we are also fine, right? Right. Alright, time for challenge. He loosened his embrace a bit and cupped Asahi's face to make him look up. Yes, we are fine. I don't blame you, so don't blame yourself either. Period. Now come on, let's go outside for a while. 
You have to come to different thoughts. But I... Noya huffed and pulled Asahi up from the couch, ignoring his protests as he dragged him towards the main door. No buts, we are going out. It's for your own sake. Asahi was silent for a moment before a soft smile appeared on his lips. Alright then. They walked hand in hand through the park, enjoying the last evening sun rays shining through the branches. Naya personally felt so full of energy he could jump around like animals in spring, and he could feel Asahi next to him relaxing too, which was the biggest reward he could ask for. He might have dragged Asahi out for the challenge, but now that he finally seemed more at peace, he couldn't hide his happiness. He didn't like it when Asahi was sad. Sure, he was used to his occasional anxiety episodes, but seeing his beloved down always made his heart ache. But now, everything seemed fine. For a while. They were just walking around two women sitting on a bench when Asahi suddenly tensed, squeezing Toya's hand a bit tighter. Asahi? What's... He paused when he heard one of the women talking in a loud whisper to her friend. Now look at that. How can they allow these people walk around just like that? In front of children? Oh, shut it. They will hear you. I don't know what's your problem. So what if they hear me? They should know what normal people think of abominations like them. Dark rage bubbled in Noya's chest. He usually didn't give a fuck about what people thought about him or his orientation, but no one got to hurt Asahi like this. No one. He put on his best shit-eating grin and turned to the woman. Hello, lady. I couldn't help but overhear what you just said, and I must inform you that neither I nor my husband appreciate your words. You? Sure, dear. I believe this lady deserves to know that she's a homophobic bitch when she apparently lacks self-awareness to know it herself. He grinned at the woman who was apparently getting ready for another tirade and tucked on Asahi's hand to lead him away, not interested in hearing more of her rambling. Asahi was quiet the whole time until Noya stopped them under one of the large trees. Well, that was fun. Asahi? What... what did you mean by... your husband? Noya paused. Did you not like it? I thought it would be a nice thing to say since... you know... But I don't have to say it again if you don't want to. I'm happy with calling you my boyfriend. No, no, it's... I was just surprised. I... Didn't expect you would want to call me that. Naya smiled and covered his face, gently caressing his cheeks. Of course I want to. I'm just waiting for the right moment. Asahi raised his eyebrow. Who says I will let you propose first? Wait, what? Asahi smiled softly and connected their lips in a loving kiss. You'll see. The gleeful smile didn't disappear from Kogana's face since he agreed to participate in the challenge. Not only because he could finally do one himself, but also because he could return the favor. It surprised him when Koshiki sat on his lap, but since then he couldn't get the image out of his head and he wanted more moments like this. He wasn't sure why Goshiki hesitated so much, or why he didn't try it before. Overall, his boyfriend seemed to struggle with many of the countless more intimate gestures couples usually did. It almost seemed like Goshiki was scared of doing anything deemed remotely romantic with him. Kogana didn't mind usually, but it made him think whether it was because Goshiki was shy, or there was some other issue, 
some block in his mind. He really hoped that wasn't the case. He liked cuddling his boyfriend and keeping him as close as possible at all times, especially home. And he really wanted to do more couple things. However, all his careful planning started to crumble before he could even begin. He watched Koshiki battle into the living room, looking more exhausted than in the last month, his chest constricting at the sight of his boyfriend's slumped shoulders and tired eyes. My poor darling. I bet he's overworking himself again. He rushed to Koshiki before he even managed to take off his back, squeezing him in a tight embrace. Welcome home, Tsu! Goshiki flinched a bit, almost uncertainly tapping on Gogana's back after a bit of hesitation. Thanks, but please don't shout so much. Oh, sorry. I just can't help it. I'm happy to see you after the whole day. Goshiki sighed and gently ruffled the several black strands on Gogana's head. I know, but you could try to control your volume when you are right next to my ear. Oh. Alright, I'll try. Now I'm happy to see you too. Are you hungry? I made us dinner. Groaning, Goshiki rubbed his eyes and pulled away from Kogana's arms. I'm not hungry right now. I think I'll just go get a shower and then sleep. But you should eat something after practice, and it took ages to... I'm not hungry, okay? What's so difficult to understand? Kogana's heart sank. Oh. Okay then. He had to sound really dejected as Goshiki stopped in his tracks and went back to cup his cheeks and press the short kiss to his lips. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I'm just so tired I don't have thoughts for eating. Is the practice that hard? Or are you pushing yourself too much again? The hands on his cheeks disappeared immediately after the words left his mouth. Gashiki made a grimace and stepped back as if Kogane burned him. His jaw tensed when he turned away. I have to push my limits if I want to do well in matches. You of all people should understand that. I do understand that, but that doesn't mean I like it when you overwork yourself to the bone. When was the last time you took a proper rest? Or when we went out for the matter? That's what you are worried about? Seriously? Clenched fists joined to Koshiki's already tense posture. Gogana bit the inside of his cheek. He knew he was moving on a thin ice. Koshiki left off of praise after all and would do anything to get it. And he hated others pointing it out. Even his own, now very worried boyfriend. He made a cautious step closer, subconsciously turning his head's palms up. I just don't want you to injure yourself because you push too hard too often. I don't mind we are not going out, or even that we only see each other in the evening, but I think you should rest from volleyball too sometimes. Like, think about something else, clear your head and stuff. It's not about what you want! Logana flinched. He wasn't sure why or how, since he didn't say anything horrible. But he realized he had to cross the invisible line Koshiki put in between them. Of course not. I'm just... I'm worried about you, that's all. I'm not a child. I know what I can and can't manage. I'm not saying you can't, I just... He fell silent under Goshiki's scorching glare. His boyfriend was fuming and every word was making things worse. Why, though? Why was worrying about one's loved one wrong? He just wanted to help. Goshiki clicked his tongue and turned away, his voice sharper than a knife. 
as if you could understand what it takes to play in Division 1. So how about you care about your own practice, huh? The words stung more than Kogane would like to admit. He sighed, suddenly feeling like a stranger in his own home. As you wish. Anything for my husband. He settled back on the couch, trying to ignore the burning in his chest. He supposed he failed the challenge, but he could as well say it now. Silence settled in the flat, only interrupted by their breathing, and Kogane closed his eyes as if that could make things better. Maybe Goshiki didn't even hear him since he spoke quietly. Or he didn't want to hear. What did you call me? There was no trace of the previous fury in Goshiki's voice. If Kogane could tell, it even sounded a bit strangled. He shook his head, his eyes still closed. Nothing. No, you did. You... Husband? Kogane didn't answer and just clenched his hands together. It was probably a mistake to do the challenge in the middle of an argument. They were supposed to go out on a walk or a date where he would do the challenge to reassure Goshiki in their relationship. This wasn't what he wanted. This was the exact opposite of what he wanted. He startled when a hand hesitantly squeezed his shoulder only to withdraw the second he danced. I'm sorry, Kanji. I, I didn't want to yell at you. I don't know what got into me there. I just... I'm sorry. I know you mean well and I'm being ungrateful. I... I'm sorry. Letting out a shattered breath, Kogane reached over his shoulder to catch Koshiki's hand. I don't want you to hurt yourself. I know. Slowly, he wrapped his arms around Kogane's shoulders. Why did you call me that? Your husband, I mean. Because it's nice. And because I want you to know I want to be with you for life. The arms around him tightened as Koshiki buried his face into the crook of his neck. Kogane decided to take a leap and gently patted Koshiki's hair, burning a soft whimper. I love you, you know? I know. I love you too. 